Hello everyone. Welcome to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez, spiritual intuitive and oracle, and I am here with my weekly Moon Day guidance message. So this is a message for the collective. So everybody as one, this is not private, individual, personal readings, um, but it is for the collective and it is for the week of October 7th, 2019. Today is actually October 8th. I am a day behind doing the reading this week. Um, and that is because I uh, was under the weather this past weekend, so I was still trying to give myself some time to heal. So I am doing the reading on Moon Day Tuesday <laughs> instead of Moon Day this week. So I'm going to give it a few moments, let everybody see that I'm live. I'm actually going to post it really quickly as well. So just bear with me. I see some of you starting to pop in. Courtney and Gina and Jamie, Freddie, welcome guys. Thanks for popping in. Just bear with me as I start doing my, my mass share. Hi, Noreen. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I am. I am feeling so much better. My voice is still a tad bit off, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, and I do have a slight um, tickle lingering in my throat that does make me cough. So I'm really hoping that I can get through this without that. But I'm going to apologize in advance if I do cough. So I... Let's hope and set the intention that there's no coughing fits that happen. <laughs> Only that tends to happen even when I'm not sick. Sometimes, you know, if there's some throat chakra stuff that starts coming up, spirit likes to uh, take that opportunity to show me through my physical body and I go into coughing fits anyway. Hi, Bridget. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was in a place of surrendering to time to just kind of allow it because I knew that it was part of a transformational process. I knew that it was really a time for me to sit back and, and take some really good me time, do some self reflecting, self healing. But then I got to the point where I was ready to climb up the wall and I said, okay, something has to give. I, I can't, <laughs> I need to be better. So, and I think this, it really started like last Wednesday, last Thursday. So yeah, here we go. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that, hon. I'm glad you made it. Okay. Let's see if I can try to copy this so I don't have to keep typing. <laughs> okay. One down. Almost on a promise. I really wish that we didn't have to do this while we were live, like if we could do it in advance and start setting it up. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Well, that's good enough. That works for me. Hi, Donna. Welcome, beautiful. Thank you for being here. Did I miss anybody? Thank you, Bridget. I don't think I did. All right. Well, happy Moon Day Tuesday. Yesterday technically was Moon Day. Um, but again, those of you who um, are on my friends list or my personal page or even seen the post here on Magical Me, you know that I was under the weather and that uh, therefore uh, Moon Day was postponed. So it's Tuesday instead of Moon Day. Um, but that's okay because, you know, divine timing. Everything happens as it's meant to, right? Hi, Flo. Hi, Jake. Oh, really? Well, then I am really happy that you managed to um, be notified <laughs> and you were able to pop in and tune in here live. So much love and thank you for that. Um, and, you know, even if you don't catch a live, I always post the replays. So you can always pop over on Monday evenings or Tuesdays and check out the replay because it's always there. All right. Thank you for being here. Thanks, love. Thanks, Noreen. 
All right, so really quickly how Moon Day works. Um, I'm gonna go over everything. Again, you know, normally for those of you who are new to my page anyway, I like to go over some news and announcements really quickly. This is news and announcements, events, offers, anything going on over here at Magical Me. Also with my sister business, Oracles of the Light. So um, let's see what we have going on. And then I'll get into after the events, I talk a little bit about the energy forecast. And then I talk, I do the actual Moon Day reading, and then I do a mudra pool, and we actually work together and do the mudra um, together, and I'll talk more about all that in a bit. So, news and events. Um, this week, um, so right now there aren't really too many like specials or anything going on. October is a really crazy month for oracles. We do get booked for lots of events and parties. Um, to come out and do readings and we actually do have some availability so if anybody would like to book us at your Halloween parties or even just to have a Halloween themed get-together we actually do card parties um, so uh, if you're interested in, in doing that you can actually message me here on Magical Me for the details you can also message over at Oracles of the Light for more details and um, the hostess is free so you get your reading and we kind of bring a little bit of a party too. We do some games and some giveaways at them. Speaking of which, we will actually be at Atara Olivia Salon in Easton, Pennsylvania on Sunday, October 13th. Uh, it is open to people that want to pop in and have a reading. However, you do have to reach out by Thursday to Atara Olivia Salon. The event is created on her page. So if you go check it out, uh, again, Atara, Olivia Salon in Easton, Pennsylvania. There's the event. I do believe we shared the event on Oracles of the Light page as well. Um, great way to come on out, see the oracles in person to get a reading one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we are offering $25 20-minute um, readings. So again, and, and then you get to meet Atara as well, who I have to give credit. Atara and Gabby um, were actually responsible for doing my hair. Um, and they're wonderful, great space great people, great energy, and um, she also has lots of products. So check it out. If you're interested, you have to contact the salon by Thursday. That is the deadline. Space is limited. Uh, let's see what else we have going on. Um, so sorry, I'm doing this off the top of my head. You would think I would have it all memorized. October 11th, so this Friday, is our monthly Magical Minds Empowered Youth Group. This is for children from the ages of 11 years old to 18 years old. We actually have an in-person, so this is not a done online, this is an actual youth empowerment group taught by myself and my partner Karen. And we actually work with children of those age groups to um, a little bit of, to give them a little bit of an empowerment. We do so by teaching them uh, mindfulness, by teaching them meditation, tools uh, to use to protect their own energy, uh, understanding their energy. We do seasonal things, fun things. Uh, this week, we're actually going to be working with the energy of the jack-o'-lantern and pumpkins and the history of where that actually came from and how they're actually used for tools of protection. So we're going to be working with the kids with that so we can, again, we sneak a little bit of uh, some spiritual stuff in there. And it's really more so the, the point of it is for the kids to have somewhere to go where they can just be themselves where they can, you know, because a lot of the kids have experienced bullying, a lot of the kids have experienced, um, you know, they might be incredibly sensitive and um, don't really understand why they are so energy sensitive. And so we kind of help them understand that and we provide a place for them to just come together with kids that are more like them. Um, and again, it's open to all. However, you do have to register in advance because we do have some questions to ask uh, regarding your child. So if you are interested, the event has been created on Oracles of the Light, or you can private message me here and ask for information and I can send over um, the registration form with the questions on it. And also, I'm not quite sure if we have anything else. We have been, oh, our dream group. Aha, there we go, I knew I was forgetting something. Hi, Jake. Hey, Casey. Welcome. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Liz. I'm not ignoring anybody. Um, oh, Jake. Two Jakes. <laughs> we have two Jakes on at the same time. There you go. Another sign. Look at that. Jake says, no, I just opened Facebook and you were up top. It's a divine sign for sure. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear the message that's going to come through then. <clears throat> so 
Oracles of the Light are hosting an online monthly dream group. We are calling it Dream Oracles. Dream Oracles or Dream Walkers were actually or are um, actual, they were beings or people that had the ability to really walk between the worlds and they did this utilizing their dream state or tapping into a more astral state with their consciousness. And so we teach the history of dream oracles and how they were actually able to go in and heal and assist other people within their lives, people that they maybe have only ever ran into once in their entire life and are able to work together. Now, this is only something that is done now. This isn't, we're not teaching you how to do that in the group, but we are opening and accessing your abilities if you are already able to do that. So there's all, nothing regarding violation of permission or boundaries or anything like that. We do not work with that stuff. Um, But we are also starting from the very beginning, teaching about how to remember your dreams, starting to being able, different ways that you could record your dreams, setting dream intentions, talking about the different types of dreams there are, the things that are happening, and this is only month two, the things that have been happening with the people in the dream group is blowing even my mind. This is a really fantastic way to start to learn how to open and tap into your um, more psychic intuitive abilities and journeying through a dream state. So it's, I can't even go into all of it because it's like, I'll be here talking about it all night long. Ah, Thanks, Jake. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, Jake's actually a member of our dream group. So he has been experiencing this um, hands on. And so it's only $10 a month. That's it. $10 a month is just what we ask for our time and energy that we're putting into this, myself, Karen, and Lindsay, and it's hosted on Oracles of the Light on a private Facebook group, and so if you're interested, go on over, check out the event, it'll have the link for you to send the $10 donation, we'll get you invited to the group, and you'll get access to not only this month's, but also last month's, because last month was really the kickoff, and it was really kind of like the starting point for everybody, so you're getting a whole lot of information. This month, we are actually working with the most popular type of dreams that you might experience are, one, problem-solving dreams and how to really work with the messages that Spirit's sending you through your dream state about solving problems in your everyday life. Um, Also, we are working with shadow dreams, also known as nightmares, and release dreams because really that is what they are, opportunities for you to release some stuff that you might be hanging on to. And they're scary for a really good reason. So we work with that, but we are also working with, because of the month of Samhain, this is a less common dream, actually, um, type of dream, but we're working with it because it's the month of October, Samhain, Halloween, the veil between the worlds is almost non-existent at this point. Our ancestors and loved ones really do take the opportunity to pop in for a visit. So we are working with visitation dreams and talking about my personal experiences, um, as I actually be the one doing that topic, and my personal experiences, um, the different types of visitation dreams that can happen, and really what you need to know about that. So, (coughs) pardon me. Um, So really, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. Again, $10 a month. You definitely want to check that out. Okay. One second. <coughs> I am so sorry if I'm coughing into the microphone, everybody. I just get this little tickle. Okay. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate that. Hi, Julie. Hi, Anna. Welcome, love. Hi, Karen. Welcome. <laughs> Donna. Casey, hey, love and light to all. Thank you so much for being here. Love and light to you as well. Okay. So the only other thing that I think that we have going on at this moment is Lori Moore, the renowned psychic medium, um, is actually going to be in person hosting a gallery in our space at Oracles of the Light over in Easton, Pennsylvania, also considered Wilson Borough. She will be there in person November 8th, 2019, Ticket sales have been going on at this point. Um, The event has been created, so go on over there. Those tickets sell out really fast. We literally just announced it, I think, the end of last week. So Lori is an incredibly um, talented and gifted psychic and medium. So that means that she is able to actually communicate with those who have crossed on Beyond the Veil. But she is also psychic, which means that she can assist you with life guidance and questions regarding that that don't actually have anything to do with anybody who has passed away. So everybody is guaranteed a reading. 
some galleries that Lori does. Um, it just really depends on if your number gets called. But at our galleries, everyone is guaranteed a reading. The cost of the ticket is $33. Definitely want to check that out if you're available November 8th. It's a Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. I believe, or 8.30 p.m. I believe. Check it out. Yvette is posted. That's all for now. I'm going to bring it down a bit and um, get ready to go into the oracle or the actual. We're going to talk about the energy forecast, which is hard for me to really talk a lot about because I've been down for the last couple of days. So I'm going to do my best. <clears throat> so, full moon is the 13th, 14th, depending on where you're at in the world. This full moon is going to be in the sign of Aries. Aries really is the beginning sign of the zodiacs. So, full moon itself is a time of empowerment. It's when we are at the peak, you know, as above, so below as within, so without the moon, we are incredibly affected by its magnetic pull. And that is scientifically proven. So we do best when we work with the energy of the cycle of the moon. So this is a time of empowerment when we are, right now we're building and building up to that point. And once we get to that point, it's like not only just empowerment and we've kind of reached this point of like transformation for the month, but also it is a time of completion and release. It's very interesting because it's like at that point where you just, you reach the peak and then you're about to start waning back down and decreasing. So it's a wonderful time for the completion of old cycles, things being wrapped up and finally put to rest. And it's also a time for us to really experience the height of what we've been waiting for throughout the month. So if you look back at last month's full moon, kind of look at what was going on around that time, you can see what is kind of being wrapped up around this time, full moon, all right? So it's a fantastic time to do any type of empowering work, any type of release work. If you wanna let go of some bad habits, some situations, some um, things that have been going on, some emotions, some mental stuff you might've been holding on to, great time to put it all down on paper and then safely release it into a fire, into a flame under the full moon, stating, I release such and such, and allow it to be transformed through the flames and the fire. Great time for that. So wonderful time coming up, but also there is a lot happening in the sky right now. Um, namely, I will speak about, I'm not an astrologer and I say this all the time, so um, I just speak about what pops out to me. It's almost like my higher self shows me things that I really need to pay attention to and they're really relevant in my life and everyone around me. So I talk about them um, when I feel the need to. So Scorpio, uh, or I should say Venus, the planet of love and relationships, just moved into the sign of Scorpio. And I probably should, before I go into this, go back to Aries really quickly. I'm sorry about that. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, which means that it is uh, like the birth, the new beginning. It's starting the new cycle. So this full moon is actually bringing about the completion of those emotional states, cycles, patterns, things that we've been kind of dealing with the last month or so. Uh, it's really kind of bringing out the release so that everything that would have been holding us from really kind of bursting forth. And I just actually had an, a flash of an image of a, um, a phoenix shooting out of the moon. So it's really interesting. So this is about being reborn. Um, and these cycles are just continuing to further um, amplify the things that are going on and shifting. So also we have, um, again, Venus going into Scorpio. Scorpio is a sign of very deep, um, very emotional, um, very intuitive. So They've got some other qualities that I won't really go into and talk about as well. Um, but it's really a sign of really embodying the heart of your emotions when it comes to romance and relationships. So I feel like what is going on this week is really emphasizing some connections. It's really emphasizing um, us to really bring stuff up with our current romantic partners and things that may not or, or you know, may not have been really at, in balance 
and going well, it's really a great time to reevaluate those relationships. And I just heard sink or swim. Um, so that, yeah. Okay. So some of those relationships, it's going to be time for us to get Scorpio is brutal truth, but in a way that means that they don't hold, they don't, um, mask, you know, and it gets a bad reputation, but it's actually incredibly necessary sometimes to be very authentically truth. Okay. And so this is about getting really authentic and true with our partners and is it time to sink or swim that is going to be the question is there something and and for those of you that are you know have relationships that are going wonderful right now then this is just a further time for you to take this thing to the next level um, it's really about expressing where you're at and what you're looking for or you know where you want this to go um, and so I feel like there's a lot of deepening of connections happening, but I also feel like in the same sense, for those of you who are currently in a relationship, um, I'm going to have like a whole new, a whole new page soon, <laughs> this relationship topic and twin flame stuff that's been coming up lately. It's really crazy. Um, it's something I don't even normally talk about. Um, but I do feel like there's deepening of soul connections actually happening right now. So I'm not ignoring your comments, everybody. I will go back and check them in one second. Um, and welcome to those of you who are just popping in. Um, so I do feel like this week is really powerful with the Scorpio Venus transition um, it, for coming into deepening of soul connections. Like I said last week, soul deep connections. These are possible um, life life partners, um, or we call divine compliments, possible what you want to call twin flame relationships, the ending of the karmic patterns and relationships for the birthing or inviting in of the soul deep, true connections and partners. This could also not be romantic. This could be business related. This could be friendship related. So relationships are pretty broad and open there. So just keep that in mind. All right. So I think it's going to be wonderful um, either way because anything that could possibly be ending, you hear me talk about this in the past, anything that could be ending and coming to a close is for your highest and greatest good anyway because it just means that you're no longer resonating at the same, um, the same level, the same frequency anymore. And in order to open up to new, we do have to let some things go, okay? All right, so that is my energy forecast, just so that you kind of have a heads up as to what's going on. Hi, Laura. Welcome. I'm glad you made it. Let's see, hi, Karen. I see you pop in, hun. Hi, Robin. Welcome. <clears throat> I'm waiting to get a phoenix. I'm, oh, I'm wanting to get a phoenix. Ooh. <laughs> well, you could be your own phoenix, Casey. It's all about that rebirth and rising from those ashes. James says, I'm a Scorpio having some relationship issues. Hit the nail on the head. Scorpio over here as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the Oracle message for the week if I haven't already done it, because that tends to happen. What part, Casey, that the rebirth, your own Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, girl. There you go. And it's interesting, since we're talking about Scorpios and Phoenix, it's probably why I did that without really knowing. Um, in ancient times, they actually, um, it was actually believed that Scorpio was the only sign that actually had three signs in one. And there was some confusion um, in ancient days and, and translating the ancient um, information into more... Um, you know, as time went on in modern day about the actual sign, you'll see sometimes there will be people that will say, well, the sign of Scorpio is actually supposed to be represented by an eagle and that's wrong and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's actually not wrong. Um, it's actually said that Scorpio is a sign that is um, the sign that's constantly rebirthing itself. It is constantly reinventing itself. It is ruled by death and rebirth. So it is all about that regenerative process rising through the ashes all the time. So it was believed that the first part of a Scorpio's journey started out as the scorpion, the, you know, uh, more shielded, more guarded, secretive, um, mystical, and 
a little bit of, um, you know, had that, that whole sting impact there when someone got a little bit too close. And then through the journey of life, the Scorpio evolved into what was the Eagle and Eagle was able to rise up and Eagle is connected to spirit and the higher powers. And so it was able to rise up, rebirthing itself and now soar above all of the regular, you know, everyday mundane life that the Scorpio was involved in prior and seeing life through an entirely new perspective. But then take it even a step further and even the eagle went through the death process, trials, challenges, and through those trials and challenges, the eagle was able to be reborn, burst into flames through the ashes. It was risen and reborn into the phoenix. So said that there was three signs to a Scorpio tells you about the process of Scorpio energy, even if you're not a Scorpio. It, it, we all probably have Scorpio somewhere hanging about in our charts. Not everybody, but there are many facets to us, not just our sun signs, guys. And we are still affected and impacted when planets go into those signs. All right. So it does impact us all. We all have the ability to rise from ashes. All right. Hi, Kathleen. Hey, Lori. Welcome. Glad you made it. I'm about to get into the Oracle card message now. I did the energy forecast and news, which everybody can get back on replay. So... I am really feeling October. It's my birthday month, so again, I'm all about it. But I'm working with the Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. Um, I've actually been working with this for a couple weeks now in my own personal readings. But I want to read with them for you guys. So, hi, Tiffany. Welcome. Kathleen, yeah. Uh-huh. 13 signs. I know. And I can never pronounce the name of the 13th sign. Um, I know it starts with an O and it sounds like Orpheus or Orphicus. Do you want to drop it in the comments for me? Because I know that this is actually your sign had they actually left the zodiacs the way that they were supposed to be according to the 13 moons. I promise I'm not an astrologer. <laughs> I, maybe in another lifetime. All right, so I do, I know, I know, Courtney, I love this deck. I wish that there would be more decks like this created. So we have multiple Halloween decks. All right, let's see, let's get into it. So I'm actually going to be asking for the week of October 7th, just so I don't throw you off, because the start of the week to me is Moon Day. So what guidance comes forward for the collective good for the week of October 7th, 2019. Ooh, it is so funny because I was running around trying to get my little magical theme here going before the reading because I hadn't had chance to really break out a lot of my Halloween altar stuff yet. So I was running around trying to gather what I could and I kept running around the house looking for owls. Now, uh, owls are one of my personal totem messengers along with crows. Um, but it's funny cause I was like really like, you can see, I don't know if you really can see it, but my little crystal quartz owl here and I couldn't find my other ones. They were downstairs still. So I didn't get them, but look at, see, I know a thing or two. A fea, a, am, I, am I saying this right? A feacus? Probably, oh, ficus. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'm telling you, some people probably come on here just to laugh at me and watch me pronounce like mudra and Sanskrit names. So my mouth doesn't go that way. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> oh, ficus. Okay. That's much easier. I was totally not saying it that way. Thank you. Appreciate it, love. Yeah, um, for those of you, you might want to check that out because it actually could technically be some of your realistic zodiac signs. Okay. <laughs> Kathleen. All right, I'm not alone. So the card is Dawn. And it says, the light after the darkness. How amazing is that? Especially considering 
we were just talking about how some situations, even though that they might seem a little, um, you know, kind of coming, you know, things are kind of coming up and coming to a head. It really is the end of a cycle. And that's what I was talking about with the full moon on the 13th or 14th, depending on where you are. Um, that's what I was talking about with the full moon. It is actually bringing up a wrapping up of the old for that birthing, that rising out into the new. So look at that. So the owl is rising above the moon, which is really beautiful. Um, it's interesting that it is a moon and it's not the sun. It does really look so illuminated that it looks like a sun. So I'm going to go with that because owl, an owl is the creature of a night, of the night, I should say, of the night. And it's, um, it's symbolically represents the ability to be able to see through the dark to be able to have that night vision because they actually hunt in the dark. So they do have night vision. So it is really about seeing through the darkness to the truth of a matter and things really being fully illuminated. So the fact that this night bird that is nocturnal is kind of really illuminated by the light talks to me about this really being the birth of a new a new era, literally a new dawn. <laughs> okay. I think my son, my son just walked in here not realizing I was live. You should have saw his face. <laughs> so the birth of a new dawn, literally. Um, and I do feel like there's a message in that in itself because I do think it's the embodiment of standing between the worlds being able to be a creature of the night at the same time standing in the light of day. So it is about balancing the light with the dark. Last week we talked all about the sign of Libra, the new moon being the scales, the balancing of the karma, and this is exactly what that's saying. It's about having balanced our darkness with the light, bringing light to those shadowy aspects, to those emotional issues and the mental discord, those things that really have been bogging us down and keeping us stuck in the muck, um, those are shadows. And so now it's about rising up out of that, being able to see through the darkness and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it is a rise of a new day. So this week, we are all going to be able to actually feel it, see it, experience it in some form or another even if it's just a small little glimpse it's there so find the blessings through all of the situations that might be going on always look for the silver lining because it is there this week and it's just a mere as we're this is just beginning guys we're just beginning we're moving into a time 2020 coming where we are not even going to recognize ourselves anymore so this is just a glimpse. So it might seem a little slow in the going, but it is there. And it's showing you a glimpse of what is to come. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not getting anything else. It's funny because when I, do you remember when I said in the beginning, I had a flash when I was talking about the full moon earlier, I had an actual vision of a Phoenix rising out of the moon. So there we go. So utilize the energy and the magic of owl this week. The light of the full moon, it can be felt as soon as I would, what's the date? So 13th is Sunday. So Monday, Sunday, Monday is when we're talking full moon, but you can feel the energy and work with the energy of the moon up to three days. So it's like the 11th, 12th, 13th, the 13th, 14th, 15th. Like you can feel the energy of the moon all of those days. So working and harnessing the energy of the moon as it, it builds you up, increases you in power and brings power to those situations that need to propel you forward, whatever they may be. Harness the energy of the owl as we see through illusion, as we see through the shadow, we see the truth, we see our truth and we stand in it. And then we take this energy and we rise higher. It may mean leaving things behind. It may mean things are rising together this week. It will be interesting to see how it occurs for each 
in every one of us as we are all one consciousness we are walking our own individual journeys at the same time okay so I hope you guys enjoyed that message this week we go back and check out some of the comments I just ended a lifelong toxic relationship and a bird rising up like the Phoenix absolutely Casey I couldn't love this I couldn't love this anymore it is impossible this card represents it all oh my goodness well then I am so happy that you made it here and that it gives you the clarity and the confirmation that you needed good for you for both of you for making a choice to want to have a healthier life a healthier love good for both of you okay Courtney says upon looking into it for temple in making my wand, I found that the owl also symbolizes a symbolic death. Yeah, this is this is also true. It, it's because of it being, um, I think they actually refer to Samhain or October as the season of the owl. So it does have um, connections, and I, and I don't know if it's like the, is, was it the ancient Celtic maybe that you looked at that actually connected it to death symbolically? And I think that's because of its hunting abilities and how it was, it's actually considered a bird of prey. But great, great point to bring up. Thank you. <coughs> Finally rising and you have verified it. All healing feels so beautiful. Good for you, sweetie. Good for you. That makes me really happy to hear. Just a footnote, my love. This is the best moon of the year to cleanse your crystals under the moon. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you for that. I tend to get lazy. I skip moons sometimes. I'll just like every other because there's so many crystals. <laughs> there's so many crystals, really, and I don't have enough window space. And I don't like to put them outside because of moisture and whatnot. But thank you for that. I'm going to use every day of the moon energy. And I'm going to use every window in our house to try to get them out. Thanks. And for those of you who, um, you know, who are unfamiliar with that, any jewelry that you wear that has gemstones, precious stones, um, you know, um, if you do own crystals and have some, but you just don't really work with them, great time to clear them. Cleansing, like Kathleen said, it does clear energetic debris, our crystals, our jewelry. It all does pick up. Also, oracle cards, tarot cards, divination tools, guys. Great time to get them in the light of the moon. Great time to make moon water. So taking some purified water, sticking it in a glass container, sticking it out under the light of the moon so that it can absorb the moon's light and rays. This is a wonderful way to then, um, you know, you can drink and absorb the moon's water. You can work with it in your practices, put it in your bath water, but also um, the charging aspect of crystals and jewelry. So it's like crystals are batteries, you know. Um, they do drain when they become corrupted with too much energy, too much debris. Imagine what they're picking up on a daily basis, um, especially if you're wearing them. So like Kathleen said, the cleansing aspect of it with the moon. But then the moon also charges them just like charge, recharging a battery. So really great time to get them out. And thank you so much for the reminder. Jake says, yeah, I don't recognize, my, recognize myself now. Great message. Well, you look awesome now, Jake. I'll tell you what, you're always awesome. But even you got a little more of a magical shine to you now. <laughs> Hi, Di. Welcome, sweetie. I did just wrap up the reading. I'm going to do the mudra really quickly. Um, but anything that you missed, you know, you can catch that back on replay. I'm learning about crystals. Do they sell fake ones? Yes. No, that is not a silly question. It's sad, actually, that it is an actual question because, yes, they absolutely do. You probably want to stay away from anything that was made in China um, because they do sell lots of fakes and glass. No disrespect, but it is the tendency of what a lot of people in the crystal industry and um, crystal markets are being flooded with lots of fakes. Be very careful. I am an advocate for buying your crystals in person. I try to avoid buying my crystals online. I need to feel their energy um, because I can tell through the pulsing, through the vibration. And also my body will kind of be like, oh, I don't want to touch this. You know, I'm also an empath. Um, so it's a, a little bit, it, it might not be that way for everyone, but I still encourage you to hold crystals before you buy them to see if they're a fit and to make sure that they're real and not glass, okay? All right, I think I covered everything I wanna cover besides the mudra. So, this week I am working with mudra deck 
known as Mudras for Awakening the Five Elements by Alison de Nicola. So what are mudras? I'll do a really quick rundown as best as I can. Mudra, the word itself, is actually Sanskrit. It's a very high vibrating ancient language used by most, most renownedly by, I should say, because I think that Sanskrit has been used for longer than that, but the um, Tibetan monks. And so it's actually a very um, high vibrating language. So everything is about frequency and sound. And so the, the sound of this language actually just saying it, that's why I have such a hard time with it. So actually by saying it, you are actually um, triggering vibrational healing frequencies in your auric field by saying it. But it, the word itself, mudra, translates to energy seal. So you can create an energy seal using your hands. Your hands have chakras in your palms. This is how energy healers, a lot of, well, like Reiki specifically, um, actually conducts energy through their palm chakras. So you do have chakras. doesn't matter if you're a Reiki healer or not. Everybody has them. <clears throat> Your fingers are triggers that are connected to the elements as well. So when you create certain gestures with your hands and your fingers, you are actually creating a mudra, an energy seal. I'm doing one right now. Um, you actually create this energy seal. This seal acts as a trigger that triggers your energy centers, also known as chakras. Each chakra is connected to your four main energy bodies, your physical, your emotional, your mental, and your spiritual or light body. Just to kind of put it briefly, because um, there's much more layers than that. But through triggering energy with these seals, through breathing, through channeling energy, you are actually channeling energy directly into those energy centers, which alleviates blockage on any of those bodies, which then can alleviate blockage on your physical body and any physical ailments or illnesses you may actually be suffering from. And it does break open the meridians or the actual circuit that your life force energy flows through that continue, well, when it's not flowing and it's blocked, it actually does create stagnant energy, which creates a lot of issues on our and our physical body, on our mental body, when people tend to get, you know, depressed, um, overwhelmed, anxiety, emotional, those things, it's all tends to have some block chakras. So it's about wanting to have a free flowing circuit. So one mudra can break open blockage through all of your chakras at once or a specific chakra because each mudra, some actually connect with one or more chakras, some connect with all chakras at once. So they are incredibly powerful. These have been used for thousands of years by the ancient Tibetan monks. They are also still widely used in a, ver a variety, I can't speak, variety of healing modality and spiritual practices today, including yoga. So they are so powerful that sometimes they actually do come with cautions. So if you currently experience certain ailments or illnesses on your physical body, it could overstimulate them and cause a little bit of irritation. If the mudra has a caution, I will let you know in advance. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, pull the mudra. And again, the reason that I do this is because it facilitates the growth and healing that we all need at this time. And mostly the message that comes forward or the mudra, it goes hand in hand with the actual card message for the week. So it's really a way just to take our own power into our own hands and begin to facilitate our own growth. All right. Oh no, Courtney. Well, maybe the mudra will help. Okay. So what mudra comes forward to assist the collective for the week of October 7th, 2019? Ooh. 
What did we talk about deepening connection this week, right? It is the, oh my goodness, this one. Don't laugh. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Divi, Muk, Divi Mukham Mudra or Divai Mukham Mudra. I did my best. But it is also known as the deepening mudra, okay? It's red, so to me it does connect with our root chakra, but not limited to. Root chakra is located at the base of our spine. So, this one assists with relaxation, support, and restoration. Facilitates deep relaxation, supports eliminatory, urinary, and reproductive systems, slows and directs the breath into the pelvis, Help, I'm sorry, helpful for insomnia and helps to improve memory. Its element is earth. The root chakra itself is our connection to our physical presence here on earth, that I am presence. So we're going to do this together, but there is a caution. So those of you who do this, that experience um, low blood pressure already, this lowers your blood pressure. All right, so for those of you who experience high blood pressure, you might want this one. But if you're already, interesting too, I chose the red color. Um, if you're, you know, if you, if, if low blood pressure is a problem for you, then obviously use this at your own risk. Don't take my word for it. Caution, okay? So you might not want to. Um, Angie Walters usually tunes in. She is the owner of Crystal Essence Healing, and she is much more deeply connected to mudra work um, and knows a little bit more regarding furthering working with them. So she sometimes will drop a mudra, I'm sorry, a mantra or a chant that goes along with the mudra that you can use instead of actually doing the mudra itself. So that's a good alternative for those of you who cannot work with this, okay? So we're going to do this together if you choose, and then I'm going to post it um, on my actual page on Magical Me, and you can save the picture to your phone, to your computer, whatever. Work with it all week long, at least once a day, just for two, three minutes, and that's all you need to help facilitate, okay? All right, so how we do this one, raise the palms in the front of the belly facing the midline, okay? So you're going to do this right in front of your belly there. Connect the tips of the ring and pinky fingers, right? So you can see how they have it there. So you're going to just, those, just those two fingers are touching, all right? The rest of the fingers are not touching. They're just open and spread out. So I'm going to show it to you. Put the card down. That might help. Okay? Just like that, but it's going to be facing down, palms open, just in front of your um, your midline there in front of your belly, okay? Straighten your spine, drop your shoulders, close your eyes. I'm going to have you take a nice deep breath in. Breathe in. And as you release your breath, you're going to blow the breath out of your mouth. channeling it into your palms or into your belly area. One more time, take a nice deep breath in. And as you do, envision that deep red color coming in through your crown. And as you blow your breath out of your mouth, see the breath and the red moving down into your stomach area and into your palms. One more time, take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Pull that deep red color in and release. And you can state the affirmation. With deep awareness, I allow relaxation to occur. With deep awareness, I allow relaxation to occur. 
with deep awareness, I allow relaxation to occur. And you should feel yourself feeling nice and anchored, almost as though you were being weighted down. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And so it is. All right, everybody. That is our Moon Day message for the week. I hope that you enjoyed it. I thank you deeply for being here with me and spending your evening or this last hour with me and showing some love and support. I appreciate and love all of you. And I hope that you have an amazing, wonderful, transformational week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.